last Sunday, I shared with the congregation on the subject that there is hope. And we were talking about Zachariah, who was in his 90s, and his wife in the 80s. And we talked about how an angel came, and Gabriel said to Zachariah, you will have a son. We also heard last week that when Zachariah heard that he's going to have a son, he doubted. And you can't blame him. He looked at his age and this <coughs> Unbelievable. And we also heard that God stopped him from speaking. So he didn't speak for nine months. But we also heard that after nine months, when the baby was born, and the people were asking, who are you going to name him? He said, John. And again, people were surprised. But we also heard, Zachariah praised God and saying that this child <coughs> is going to be a prophet that this child is going to bring a light. Now this morning reason, the child is born. John is born. He has been living in the wilderness. Now for those of you, all of you know, understand that he was a funny guy. His clothes were funny. His eating methods were funny. And here he is coming to Jerusalem, to Nazareth, to the Jordan and preaching and saying to the people, repent for the kingdom of God is near. This is John reminding inhabitants in Jerusalem that something big is coming. Something wonderful is coming. Something that can give us peace is coming. Something that can give us joy is coming. And the people ask this question, what shall we do? Oh, what shall we do? You know, he called them names. He called them, why are you running? What are you afraid of? And the people responded, what shall we do? And John said to them, 
do something. If you have a code, share that code. If you have extra food, share extra food. Do something! This is what John is saying to the people who are coming to him, who heard the word that the kingdom of God is near. Do something. John is saying to us this morning, be practical, do something. And one is asking themselves, what can I do for Strasbourg United Church? John is saying, do something. If you are waiting for the Messiah to come, do something. And if you have not thought about giving something to Salvation Army, to the women's shelter, this morning I'm asking you, do something, don't forget. I was talking to Tina this morning, asking her about her trip to Germany. And she told me something that really struck me. She said, the Germans don't celebrate Christmas as us. They don't have all that we have in our stores. Every store, every mall, there's so much. She says their homes are small size homes and the decorations in their houses is not as much as we do. When she said that, you know what I said to myself, Again, why did you go to home hardware store and buy that light for $61? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yesterday I woke up very early in the morning, Kenway was still sleeping. Yeah, I go to Home Garden Store and I buy this light that I can put in front of my house so that you know how you get on the machine again so that they light the door or whatever. I thought to myself, oh, Tina, do I need that light? No, I don't need it. <laughs> Do something we have not in our homes that we can get rid of. I was looking at my wardrobe and I thought to myself, wow, I need to get rid of these shirts. Why do I need so many shirts? For what? This is what John is asking you and me today to do. Do something. Friends, I'm asking you if you have extra coins in your pocket, carry them in your wallet so that when you meet someone who has nothing, you can share. Friends, I'm asking you this morning, send a Christmas card to a family that is in need and add some couple of dollars to make that family happy. Every year, Caroline and I support one family in South Africa for Christmas. We have many relatives. Unemployment is high. People don't have food. And because we live overseas, they think we have money. They don't know how much we are taxed. <laughs> so we've decided this year we're sending one a Christmas gift. So I'm asking you today, this morning, just to be practical, just as John wants us to do, to do something. And we send this money to this family 
so that this year, 2018, they can have a good Christmas. They can be able to eat and drink. This morning, do something. Support our choir. Support and do something. I see Andy when he practices with this choir, he wants those to be perfect. Now look at these people who are so committed. Structural United Church, I'm asking you this morning to support the choir. As I'm going to ask you to support the Sunday school children as they do this big project of sending Christmas cards to Middlesex Living Community, 94 of them. We have three in our church who come to this church every Sunday. Do something. If the soldiers ask Jim, John, what can we do? John said, listen, do justice. Do something. You know what I like about scripture? Is that every time you read the scriptures, John is not judgmental. He looks at the people as they are and accept them as they are. And Structural United Church has a sign that says, all are welcome. We accept you as you are. You don't ask questions. You don't judge people. We just accept them as they come to us. This is what Christ would have loved. This is what Christ wants from us. It's not about us. It's about his ministry. It's about Christ's ministry. So when people come to us, when come, people come to us, as we share the grocery cards, we don't ask the people, where do you come from? Why are you wearing so smart clothes? We don't ask. It's not our work to ask questions and judge people. Diane, our work is to love people and just give them those are the cuts. When someone says, I have not had a meal for five days, can I get two cuts? Sometimes we say, no, you can't get two cuts. So John is saying to us, do something. And then, he says to us, persist, don't stop. Let's not stop what we're doing. Let's not stop our hospitality meal, which was started by Julie. You remember that medicine? Julia? Do you remember that we all you forgot to that minister? Please don't tell me you forgot him. She's the one who started hospitality in. And she left this church broken. But she started something that is working today almost 10 years. It doesn't really matter. What John is asking us to do is to continue to persist and not to stop. To persist caring for the community. The other day at Friendship Lunch we had a speaker from Women's Shelter 
she told us some horrifying stories. Imagine, 80% of the women in this place of ours are abused. They have to run and go to the women's shelter. Please, I'm asking you this morning, let's not stop supporting the women's shelter. We have children in that women's shelter that needs toys and crowds, and we did. So what I'm asking this church, let's not stop doing that wonderful work. Let's not stop the hospitality meal. Let's not stop the grocery cards because the work that we do, we do for Christ's sake. Let's not stop. The last thing I want to share with you. First, we are asked to participate in this congregation, in this work. We have so many things that we need to do. We have a youth group that is striving. We have so many things. We have so much talent. Church. The last thing that I want to share with you, that Paul, that John is sharing with us, pursue. Pursue the story of Christ coming. Pursue the story. There's a story that was told where God was talking to Gabriel <clears throat> and Gabriel was saying, God, this is too much. Look at the world. There's so much problems. There's so much hurt. There's so much pain. There's so much conflict. There's so much disagreements. Churches are in strife. Governments are falling. There's too much. Why don't you just leave these people alone? God said to Gabriel, no, no, I'm not leaving them alone. I am God. I am God. And this is why we celebrate this advent. Because God has come to us. And friends, God is here with us. He came in Jesus, Emmanuel, the Prince of Peace. He is here this morning. He is with us. He wants us to participate and be practical. He wants us to continue and not stop. And He wants us to pursue and celebrate that God in His love sent Jesus to be our friend and to support us. When I came to Strathroy 2016, November, I remember very well clearly when the conference called me and said you have to go to Strathroy. They need your help. Friends, I have not asked who is Strathroy. I didn't ask where they come from, where they are headed. I just said, Lord, here I come. And 
Caroline and I decided that we will love this church, we will love this people. And we will bring hope and peace in this church. And hallelujah. Hallelujah, we have brought joy and peace. Your minister is funny. Your minister sometimes is crazy. But that's okay. This morning I wanted to put on my Christmas hat. Cameron said, why are you taking the Christmas hat? In my heart I said, give me a break. <laughs> Participate, continue, don't stop the good work that has been started here and pursue. Remember, Christ died for us and let us be joyful as we sing together, joyful, joyful, not 